let's look at MySQL implementation within Red Hat Enterprise Linux. MySQL is a dynamic RDBMS or DBMS database management system that is widely available and ships with most Linux distros. So it features DBMS engine and is compatible with many front ends with various front ends including scripting languages such as Perl, PHP as well as front end interfaces like ODBC it also includes GUI management etc etc so it's a full-fledged DBMS which is used on many mixed type systems throughout the world and is included with Red Hat Enterprise 5. Version 5 is the current major release and we're going to go ahead and install it. So let's set up a task to install MySQL clients and server. The client Pack packages or client software can be found in the client package which is simply MySQL followed by the version name and the server engine the DBMS itself can be found in the server package. We'll use yum to perform the installation but before doing so let's launch a browser and connect to our RPM repository our yum repository to show you the list of packages included with this release. Once at the page we'll search using control F when this is completed and there we see a Python interface a free radius interface DBD mod auth which is an Apache module and lo and behold the MySQL RPM which houses the client packages the client packages include MySQL which is an all-purpose client as well as tools such as MySQL dump and MySQL import among others. The other main program is MySQL-Server but there are ancillary programs such as an ODBC connector, a benchmark program, the development package in the event that you'd like to compile a program against MySQL such as Snort and IDS to provide a hook into MySQL there's also a test package. But we're interested in installing the client package as well as the server package reflected by these two programs. So with that said, let's navigate to the shell and perform our YUM installation. We'll close screen, reset the buffer, then YUM Y install MySQL. This will search repository as usual as we've done so many times to install MySQL. It installs dependencies including Perl DBI and momentarily if we RPM query all get MySQL we'll see that it's installed and if we enumerate the contents using query lists let's go ahead and RPM query list MySQL you'll see that it includes support for multiple languages but more importantly the client utilities that help you to interact with the backend DBMS. So starting from the top, we say config file that's located in the LDS or conf.d directory. There's a primary config file located in etc. This is my.cnf and this file can be used by both the clients and server package or programs and we've installed it using yum y install mysql and it includes some key items. This is the primary config file and it contains directives for both the server as well as client programs. There are a list of client packages located beneath user bin. Any user on the system indicated by the location, user bin, but more importantly the permissions associated with those items can access these programs. And as mentioned, the key programs include MySQL, this is the primary client used to interact with the server. So this is primary client used to interact 
with the server, but there are other ancillary clients that allow you to perform specific functionality such as dumping a database or all of the databases on a server for backup purposes. MySQL admin which allows you to administer, perform administrative tasks. So this is the primary admin utility which allows you to perform tasks such as changing administrator or any user's password, start and stop the server amongst other things. MySQL import which allows you to import data from text or other sources into a table structure and other utilities. Again, there are also drivers included to provide MySQL client support for various programs. Programs that rely upon these drivers will complain if they cannot find them, the live MySQL client. And the MySQL package provides them so that you can avoid those issues. There are man pages for each of the client programs which instructs you on how to use the client and how the client uses the config files, global and user base, support for multiple languages, and so on. Now again, because it's in user bin, if you type my and tab it out, you'll see the multiple clients, MySQL, admin, dump, import, show, access, so on and so forth. They're all available to all users on the system. And you can use the client to connect to remote MySQL servers, since it is a client server program, but since we have not installed the server, we'll be unable to connect to the local instance. For example, if we were to try to connect using MySQL, user root, for example, this would default to the local host and return that it's unable to connect to the socket, and that is the Unix domain socket, because it isn't running, it isn't installed. So that leads us to the next step, which is to install the server using yum, MySQL server, will install the server package, which will then lead us to some tasks that you should perform, we will perform and you should perform to secure your server. Let's give this a run, and there we see it's installing a DVD Pro module, which is required, and the server is now installed. Let's RPM query this MySQL server to see what's contained or what's included. And we'll see from the top that there's an init D entry, which comes no surprise. It allows you to start, stop, restart, reload, and manage the MySQL instance. Other important items, we'll scroll down. These are items that are used primarily by the MySQL engine and not directly by users, but nonetheless can be. There's a hot copy utility, the hot copy databases that are running to target servers. And if we scroll down, we'll see that there's documentation for MySQL. And beneath varlib MySQL, this is the primary directory where MySQL will maintain its database entries, which you'll see momentarily when we bring the server up. Beneath user lib exec is the daemon itself. This is the primary program. So this is the DBMS engine. And when you start the service using service MySQL start, it will start this MySQL D entry. Again, init.d contains the entry that's of concern, MySQL D. So that said, we've installed it. Let's move forward with starting the server and setting up the default privileges. So service MySQL D start will attempt to start the server and upon initialization, meaning the first time you start your MySQL server, it does a few things. It tells you that it's initializing the MySQL database. The server, like with Microsoft's SQL implementation, maintains a database named MySQL to contain permissions and references to different databases. So there's a system database named MySQL, maintained by MySQL, which is set up upon initialization or the first instantiation of MySQL. It warns us that we should be sure to reset the password for root. That's a task that we need to do. And after that, there's some additional information regarding where to get items from MySQL's shop online 
and the server is now up and running. So PSEF, grep, MySQL will reveal that it is indeed running, and it uses a default data directory of varlib MySQL. So again, if we lsltr varlib MySQL, you'll see that there are now entries. Each directory represents a database. So there's a test database, which is suggested that you remove, but it's used for testing purposes, and the main MySQL database. There are log files, there's a socket file, and a data file for the InnoDB format. However, if we enumerate the contents of MySQL, you'll see that there are multiple tables. These files represent tables in the standard storage engine format supported by MySQL, which we'll show you momentarily. So each of these items represents a distinct table within the user table within the MySQL database, or within the MySQL database. These are distinct tables, including a user table, database table, and other types of tables to manage the running instance. So it's up and running, but there's some defaults that need to be set. When MySQL is started, and let's just note that task two is to start MySQL server and modify perms for root. So to start, we use service start and we should also ensure that the service starts when the system reboots, so check config the name of the init D entry on will ensure that the service is up and running in run levels 3 and 5 and here we switched the L and Q characters let's update our notes so that Q comes before L now the service will restart or start whenever the system is booted. But as far as perms are considered or are concerned, when you connect to a default MySQL instance after having started it, the root user within MySQL has no password. So if you indicate MySQL you root, this will connect you to the instance as you see here. It launches us into the MySQL terminal monitor, which is an interactive interface to work with the DBMS engine. When you connect, it tells you that you are in monitor mode, and it also tells you your connection ID, the version of the server, how to get help, how to clear a buffer, and you should end your commands with what you see here, and or, or backslash G is the escape sequence and typically you end your commands with semicolon, which is what's reflected, although it looks like a colon. So we're in this terminal monitor. This is a client-server connection that's open, but we should set the permissions first and then use the terminal monitor.